ただいま。Innovative City Forum Brainstorming Session will now begin. Transformation of human behavior brought about as the result of DX and new normal. How can we evolve as human beings? <clears throat> Those of you who are joining us online, we have a housekeeping announcement. On the right hand side of your view screen, there is a chat tool called Slido. We welcome your questions, your comments, and feedback. So now we're going to start the brainstorming session. May I invite the panelists to come up on the stage? Business Insider Japan, Supervising ed Editor in Chief, Ms. Keiko Hamada. Think Tank Sophia Bank co-founder Ms. Kumi Fujisawa, Keio University Sch School of Medicine professor Hiroaki Miyata, and the moderator of the session is Director of Academy Hills Heizo Takenaka. Professor Takenaka, the floor is yours. This is the third session this afternoon, and this is a panel discussion to summarize the discussion that took place during the brainstorming session. As I mentioned at the very beginning, from the past few years at the Innovative City Forum, we have been holding brainstorming sessions. In the World Economic Forum, uh, there is a brainstorming session as to uh, how people think about the economy going forward. And it's not going to create uh, uh, a conclusion per se, but uh, it's a session in which we want to enhance our mindset. And this year, in the brainstorming session with COVID-19, people are were unable to physically come together. And so we were holding panel discussion uh, on the stage while uh, we try to solicit comments and feedback uh, from the audience. So the brainstorming sessions uh, took a different format this year compared to how we were doing in the past. And the brainstorming sessions were held in three sessions. We've had very interesting, very inspiring discussions. And uh, I am very much looking forward uh, to this brainstorming session where we will be uh, seeing uh, the discussions evolve even further. The first uh, session was on communication. And the moderator for that session was uh, Hamada-san, who is here with us. And the second session was uh, how GDP will change going forward, the GDP's role. Uh, the definition of the role of GDP uh, was a starting point of discussion and how our sets of values could change. And Ms. Fujisawa moderated that session. The third session was on data. And uh, from the various challenges that we're facing uh, involving data, uh, how are we to change going forward? The session was moderated by Professor Miyata of Keio University. And as we've heard earlier with new normal, how are we to change going forward? How can we evolve as human beings or whether our uh, behavior will evolve at all in the first place? So through communication or through sets of values or through data, how are we going to evolve going forward before and after the pandemic? Uh, the world is completely different, as I said at the beginning, but the change that we're on the horizon is accelerating. I think this is a, a very easy to understand way of putting it. And uh, so from that perspective, each of uh, the moderators of the sessions will summarize the discussions that took place so that we can have an in-depth discussion. And what I asked them, during the uh, briefing was that uh, they could summarize the discussion in a compact manner and to share with us uh, some keywords that popped up in their discussion. And we want to have a more in-depth discussion in an interactive manner uh, with the other three members. Uh, they were wonderful moderators and at the same time, 
they will be leaders uh, in this field uh, going forward in Japan. And therefore, I am looking very much forward to hearing their respective views. So from the communication aspect, uh, Hamada-san, please take the floor. My session was how communication will change. So why did I choose communication as my theme? Actually, I believe that the biggest change in COVID was probably in our work style. Japanese people took for granted. It was like a religion that uh, everybody has to commute on packed trains every single day. Nobody doubted that this will continue forever, but due to COVID, uh, which have forced us to work from home, what we found was that uh, what is the meaning of working at a company and what is online communication? How does it impact the relationship between people or uh, our sense of belonging to a group? So this is why I chose this topic. And the panelists came from very diverse backgrounds, one from a company. We asked uh, Hiramatsu-san from Fujitsu's uh, corporate, uh, who's a Fujitsu's uh, corporate executive officer, and then a second uh, person uh, came from uh, a theater company. Uh, Mr. Komikado uh, has uh, established Gehida No Meets, where uh, people put together plays uh, without meeting ever and during the performance as well. So this is uh, Mr. Komikado. And uh, Mr. Hongo, uh, how does uh, this change impact uh, the human body or, or, or humanity? So we invited uh, Mr. Hongo, who is studying primates uh, at Kyoto University. I think one very clear change was how communication change in companies uh, created changes. And this, this was uh, what we asked Hiramatsu. In online uh, communication, it is flat. Uh, there is no sense of hierarchy in online communication. So hiramatsu said that actually discussions became more open and democratic. One positive change was that uh, uh, rather than thinking that uh, the other party understood, uh, we are now able to verbalize and uh, clearly state what we want to communicate. Also due to having some uh, additional uh, time due to uh, uh, no commuting. Uh, some women who had hesitated to take managerial position uh, became uh, more willing to take up uh, that mantle or because of the additional time awarded due to working from home. So this uh, changed motivation amongst the employees. And uh, a very interesting story from Kamikado-san uh, was I asked him, uh, how do you collect a diverse set of people and create entertainment together? Uh, what was the important thing uh, when you were working with these people? And he said that uh, there was a common language between uh, these people. Uh, people came from diverse backgrounds. Some were YouTubers. Some were uh, coming from outside of theater. And uh, what they communicated was whether this will have a significance, whether it is meaningful. Uh, what, I'm, what he was trying to say was whether uh, the activities uh, were contributing to society, whether it was meaningful to society. That was how they were able to make decisions. So even though they were uh, in distant locations, they were able to create something together. And then Hongo-san, uh, from the perspective of primate study, he said that uh, humanity through evolution, uh, acquired uh, the eye with uh, large whites. And so uh, by having this uh, white in the eye, you're able to read the emotion of the other party and how this will impact uh, online communication. Uh, this is something that we have to see. Uh, but uh, in a virtual setting, uh, sometimes it is difficult to read the, the expression in people's eyes, or it is difficult to communicate through body language. So it might be difficult to build a relationship on trust uh, when we are simply connecting online. Uh, there are the merits and merits uh, from being in a group. Uh, uh, when you are in a group, you're able to collaborate together. Uh, but the demerit is whether you can really trust that other person, that is actually a cost. So or in an online virtual communication, or whether the merits or the demerits, which is larger, are actually there are both aspects. There is a positive and negative implications. But 
we have uh, been paying a large cost in order to assure uh, whether we can trust and rely on the other party. And in some aspects, online communication makes it difficult to ascertain whether the other party is trustworthy. But as long as the group is able to share a set of values, uh, then it becomes easier to create trust. So people who were just coming together in a haphazard manner, or if you were able to uh, really share a sense of trust or vision of the company, what is the purpose of being at that company and working together by verbalizing, uh, by expressing that uh, in an explicit manner uh, that will create a sense of group? In other words, uh, you could belong to multiple groups rather than just one group uh, and share different values uh, amongst these groups. So or sharing values, building trust, I think these were the key words that arose so that you don't necessarily have to belong to a certain group. Thank you very much. I understand your point very well. Uh, I think you touched upon all the key points. There were several episodes that you shared. When you're working remotely, more women are willing to take on managerial positions. That's a very uh, interesting phenomenon. Yes, I, I also found uh, many female workers who, who were working a uh, shorter time, but now they're able to work full time. And rather than uh, based on the hours of work, you're able to assess people by their results. Uh, so that is a very big change. Also in terms of primates, uh, within the 200,000 years of humanity's history, only 80,000 uh, people have been using language. And uh, people's eyes during this process became uh, longer horizontally uh, and uh, so that you're able to read people's expressions better. That was a very interesting discussion. And uh, also, uh, when virtual reality progresses, how will this impact us? Currently, remote communication is via like Zoom. It's uh, two-dimensional. It's uh, based on the screen. But in virtual reality, do we go back to where we were before? Uh, so I will be asking those questions to you later on. Thank you very much. Then, uh, Fujisawa-san, uh, please summarize uh, your uh, discussions. Uh, we have uh, discussed the changes in values, uh, the search for alternatives to GDP to measure a country's wealth uh, was uh, uh, the topic discussed. It was a very challenging uh, theme. Uh, the three speakers uh, engaged uh, in discussions on this topic uh, at the very outset, uh, OECD. Um, head uh, uh, of uh, Tokyo Center, uh, Murakami-san, uh, discussed that in 1930s, uh, how much uh, money can be spent uh, on uh, a war uh, was the uh, metric uh, for of uh, GDP. It is not about uh, individuals, but as a collective, uh, the, uh, the funding uh, was uh, the core focus uh, in establishing the GDP. Therefore, the disparity as well as uh, poverty that is occurring uh, has not been measured appropriately. So GDP will not suffice uh, as a measure going forward. Uh, according to Murakami-san, uh, the three uh, speakers said that uh, the metric uh, for uh, affluence uh, is necessary, which is not based on monetary terms. We need that, but the one will not suffice. Uh, we need multiple number of uh, such metric. As uh, the key word for my session was uh, diversity, trust, and uh, connectivity. We need a diverse uh, metric. And uh, when we talk about diverse uh, values, how can we uh, quantify uh, this? And uh, the speakers uh, responded that uh, we need to have uh, a numerical understanding. We have to visualize this because uh, we have to measure the progress made. When managing a community, we have to uh, evaluate the results. And uh, the designing uh, will have to be, will require uh, something that is visible and uh, something that uh, can be represented in numerical terms. It can't be vague. So, uh, what kind of uh, values will be required uh, to measure uh, affluence was discussed at the OECD. Health Life uh, Index uh, uh, has been uh, introduced. Trust uh, is also. Um, 
uh, shown as a metric. Uh, do you um, trust your country, your company, your colleagues? Uh, it's difficult to uh, put this in numerical terms, uh, but uh, uh, surveys will be conducted uh, to have a numerical uh, evaluation. And uh, uh, Satwasan of uh, Kayak also participated, uh, and uh, he is a proponent uh, of uh, regional uh, capitalism. When the regions uh, become uh, abund uh, abundant, uh, there is a need uh, for uh, uh, metric, and uh, and uh, the regional coin has uh, been uh, introduced to evaluate the connectivity of uh, the, the community. So in order to evaluate uh, the affluence, uh, there are different uh, metrics uh, that uh, can be introduced. Uh, and um, other than money, uh, what uh, can be used? I think we have to do away uh, with the money. Basic income uh, should be introduced uh, in order to bring to the fore the uh, affluence. On a temporary basis, uh, uh, basic income uh, may have its uh, advantage, uh, but uh, if by introducing uh, basic income, according to uh, Professor Yasuda, uh, there will the, the gravity of the money uh, will be very strong. Uh, that uh, was a question posed uh, by uh, Professor Yasuda. Uh, monetary uh, affluence and other affluence uh, was also discussed. Murakami-san said, that uh, trust uh, is very important. Uh, when uh, there is high trust, uh, there is also economic uh, value enhancement uh, as well. Sato-san also said uh, that uh, in regional capitalism, when there is better connectivity, uh, money uh, growth as well as economy will also, also grow. Therefore, uh, we did not uh, come to a uh, conclusion, but uh, by engaging in uh, discussions, uh, we uh, felt it is important to realize our diversity and um, to realize the different values of people. That means that uh, trust will have to be nurtured as much as possible. Um, so this uh, connectivity, this bond uh, must uh, be designed. So that I hope that I have been able to do a good summary. Uh, so you've talked about the diversity, trust, uh, as well as bond. Uh, I have a, a view on uh, basic income, so, but I will not uh, um, elaborate this point here. Um, other than GDP, diversity is very important. Other metrics uh, must be introduced. Typically thinking, that's secret, um, has also said this. It's a dashboard type of uh, index uh, that uh, uh, will be required. It's like um, the panel uh, of a car. And uh, at Davos meeting, I also made this point this year. And we also discussed what kind of dashboard will be appropriate. That will be the question posed. I'm going to ask you later. Thank you. I forgot to mention, by diversity, there's a di gender diversity, half women, half men. And so I think the diversity is well realized in this panel. I forgot to mention that at the outset. OK, so thank you for waiting. Uh, Professor Miyata, from you. In our section, we talked about the revolution, revolutionary change in data utilization. As for keyword, CO hyphen, in other words, co creation, uh, creating together, co creation, co existence, CO dash co. This, I think, is a keyword. Data is, uh, the world is uh, working through data, with data. Uh, that's something that uh, people realized with COVID-19. And we're, I'm not saying that uh, we can predict everything through data, but it's on a one-by-one -one basis. We have to look at it uh, from an unpredictability perspective. Some people say that data is like oil of the 21st century, uh, but uh, companies like GAFA and so forth are making tremendous uh, gross, but in the meantime, uh, Professor Yamamoto, who is an expert in constitution, mentioned that oil and data have different characteristics. Data, uh, the right uh, of uh, uh, individuals. Uh, he he talked about the uh, uh, new uh, personal rights. Uh, uh, to handle data, uh, oil, if you use it, it will be consumed, it will be gone. But 
that there will be competition and there will be competition over oil, but there are different uh, features associated with the data because uh, no matter how much you consume, it won't be gone. It could be used concurrently at the same time and depending on the purpose of why you use data, the value attached to it will also change. And so uh, 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 use of data will involve uh, different rules. And the most important point is that the data could be shared. Uh, one data of one patient uh, could be added to 10,000 data uh, of 10,000 other individuals. And that would add value to that individual and also to that the collective uh, data source. And so data access rights uh, should be looked at. and. Um, uh, the tech giants are also uh, changing the way we approach uh, social good and has to be explained. Otherwise, people are unable to use data. And how should we capture social good? Um, Nagakura-san, from the mass media perspective, uh, providing a one-way explanation is not enough, she said. We need to uh, convince the user experience and uh, the central government and local governments through dialogue should accumulate trust and build a trust. Otherwise, trust or social good uh, will not be achieved. It will not be authentic. The challenge so far is that when we talk about building ICT, for example, uh, we tend to build it as an infrastructure infrastructure and we were unable to uh, explain what the purpose of use was. Uh, we were uh, taking part in the line survey. Uh, we were It was being claimed to be for public use, but that wasn't convincing enough. Uh, we wanted, we had to explain uh, to, to line that uh, uh, on how that uh, data collected through the survey will be utilized or has been utilized. And so it was a um, two-way dialogue or bi-directional trust that uh, Professor Yamamoto was talking about. And that would build a foundation for trust going forward. And uh, Mr. Igarashi, who is the mayor of the city of uh, Tsukuba, was saying that the public use purpose uh, is no longer effective. He did a questionnaire in the city of Tsukuba and 50% said they don't understand what the data is being used for. So when we co-live uh, together, we need to be thinking of the new sets of values. In other words, what is the purpose and how do we want uh, trust to be built up? We need to be mindful of the diversity of the needs. Uh, that was something that I was able to learn from the session government, not the government taking the lead, but uh, democracy has to be built through dialogue uh, between the government and uh, the general public. Uh, in the United States, uh, there was a uh, presidential election was either red or blue uh, with voting. It was uh, more or less determined, but this time it was uh, it didn't work out that way. And the fact that it didn't work out, work out that way uh, is not necessarily a bad thing because there is diversity and that diversity is part of uh, diversity in voting is part of the democratic process. Where did we go? Where did we go to travel and what do we enjoy? That's all part of diversity. And um, new style of uh, democracy is uh, going to be nurtured through this process. Um, affluence. Uh, this goes back to Fujisawa-san's theme, but uh, instead of ownership, uh, we have shifted to well-being and not just an individual's well-being uh, because it doesn't help the world. That has become clear with COVID-19. Uh, better coping is more important. In a world of a world in which we are connected, uh, we can um, re uh, lead we can uh, build a trust and build a better future. Those are some things that we discussed in our session. Thank you very much. As was mentioned in the first session or the second session, trust uh, has taken up a large weight. And as a matter of fact, uh, when it comes to utilization of data, uh, the word trust has come to the forefront. And I think that was made clear through that session. So, Yamamoto-san proposed uh, and you discussed the basic rights with regards to data. 
So how do we really establish that? What do we need to uh, overcome in order for us to establish basic data rights? And perhaps this is something that uh, will require uh, people from uh, legal backgrounds to participate. But uh, those are our topics that we should like to uh, discuss. So you talked about cooperation, co-habit, shared value, and bi-directional. That's very important as well. When we make a phone call, uh, you often hear the recorded message saying that uh, uh, for the sake of uh, quality management, uh, your uh, voice will be recorded, but that's not really providing bidirectional value. So I will try to make it as interactive as possible, but let me first go to Hamada-san. I asked about uh, virtual reality. Perhaps that is the way for us to go back to normal. And uh, also with regards to human rights and dashboard. Uh, I, these are, are questions that I think that the audience is interested in as well. So starting from you, Hamada-san. Actually, at the last part of the session, one comment came up uh, about an avatar. And uh, everybody was quite excited. So there is one company that allows you to go to uh, office via avatar and uh, the uh, interview uh, for uh, recruiting recruitment was done via avatar as well. And actually that comment came from Kumi-san. Uh, actually her uh, acquaintance uh, actually uh, joined the company uh, with the uh, by being interviewed via avatar and now she's going to office via avatar. But with the current technology, I think it's still easier for us to ascertain whether that person is trustworthy when we are meeting face to face. Like when you say, yep, I'm on it, I'll do this within one week. If you see that message via text, you have to simply believe that. But uh, when the person says, I will do it in one week, you, when you're meeting face to face, you can really read the expression uh, in their eyes. So I believe that still face-to-face -face communication has an advantage over online communication. But there are some quiet people, shy people at the office who are not able to uh, speak up during conferences. And there are people, right, like that, who, who always says, yes, yes, uh, but uh, you don't know what that person is thinking about. But uh, when you're communicating online, sometimes the essence of the person uh, becomes more clear. Uh, so uh, perhaps some people's characteristics can be uh, better uh, seen via online rather than when painting face to face, uh, and then vice versa for other people. So I don't know yet uh, which is better. Uh, for reading people, but technology advances so quickly. So maybe in one year, perhaps there will be a technology, a virtual reality technology, uh, that enables us to really gauge uh, whether the person is telling the truth, or maybe we'll be able to tell whether the person is telling the truth or lies. According to Professor Matsuo, an expert of AI, there is already AI that can read people's uh, eyes. So I am not hiding anything from you. Uh, I'm always tr speaking truthfully, so please uh, trust me. Fujisawa-san, uh, VR is a very interesting topic. If you have any further comment on that, go ahead. There is a company that allows that kind of attendance, right? Yes. Actually, the avatar uh, is able to change people's capabilities. For example, using Einstein's avatar, the test result is better. Or if you are uh, in athlete's avatar, uh, you are able to uh, hold something that's too heavy for uh, your normal self. Uh, so perhaps avatar is a way to uh, heighten your capabilities. Uh, may I also talk about the avatar? For the World Expo, uh, virtual uh, is going to be one of the main aspects. And we're talking about uh, on the topic of the World Expo. Going forward, virtual might be the main part. There is no restriction there, so that's going to be ideal. And then the reality, we're going to install part of what is achieved virtually, is so the order uh, may change. And what we're currently discussing is fashion. Uh, male, female fashion. Male fashion tends to be very boring and not for you. Uh, but uh, for females or non-people, 
uh, there may be an ideal image of fashion, and then you could wear or a flavor of that uh, idealized virtual image physically. So there is a really great potential for virtual technology. There are different takes on virtual. By simulation, uh, in medical field, you do simulations and then you warp to new vaccines and so on. So I think from a virtual world to real world, I think from very different layers and in very different perspectives, uh, this is going to be expanding. Uh, let me also so talk about virtual. Uh, when I talk to young people, they don't want something physically, but uh, virtually they can have uh, Keita Maruyama's dress being worn by their avatar and they're satisfied. I can't understand how you are satisfied with the, the avatar wearing the clothes that you want to wear, uh, but uh, that's a really a different world. Yes. So people's values are becoming much more diverse and that is becoming prevalent. So in that sense, the dashboard that uh, you talked about is very difficult. When we discussed in the session, what are the indicators of richness? It's very diverse. There are many, many indicators. Happiness and richness or affluence, that's different. So you could combine multiple factors that contribute to your sense of uh, being rich and that could lead to happiness. So you would need a lot of indicators. And so how do you set up that dashboard? Uh, Mayor Igarashi discussed yesterday, what kind of uh, city do you want to create? What kind of region do you want to create? When you explain to the citizens, this is the vision that I have. And in order to clarify that message, this is the criteria that we're going to set. For example, more than 60% of the population feel that uh, there is a benefit from being a cutting-edge scientific city. And so setting up the criteria in order to communicate better with the citizens. So oh, for the certain group who is aiming for some certain ideal, uh, that will create one set of criteria. And then uh, creating that dashboard together uh, and then narrowing down uh, that criteria, I think you will need different steps. From a different perspective, the current GDP is looking at the income level at this moment in time. But now we are trying to uh, look at sustainability. So we have to look at the past stock and what we have today will impact the future. So the past assets and how to convert future into present value. And we have only been looking at the monetary stock because money was everything. But going forward, when we have different indicators, then uh, the stock and the flow, that would be different as well. And then how do we convert future value into present value? So there will be very different aspects. Actually, the National Tax Authority, in addition to looking at the income flow, they're also looking at the people's assets, the stock side. And uh, Nanjo-san moderated a session uh, that is very relevant here. So or how to discount to present value uh, to calculate the current value. And then uh, when you calculate based on the future value to present value, that prediction will change the movement you have today eh, because uh, you don't have sufficient present value. So this is a very uh, deep topic. May I ask a question to Kumi? So when there are diverse ways to measure richness, uh, you could, different municipalities could have different criteria, right? Because for this city, this criteria is important. So for now, we are living in a certain city and we're voting uh, for the mayor. Uh, but uh, when there is a municipality with a certain criteria or the mayor that sets out a certain criteria, perhaps people will move uh, to relocate to that uh, city. Yes, that is very uh, a good point. So, but you could have uh, different criteria. For example, for criteria A, I like a city B, but for criteria See, I like uh, this city. And then like uh, Lithuania, you could get uh, like a partial citizenship. 
so the people way people live and uh, lead their lifestyles may change and this is an answer i think to the previous question from uh, professor Takenaka. it's like the basic data rights so uh, professor yamamoto talked about this as part of the constitution but even in this very stable administration, uh, they were not able to touch the Constitution. But uh, what is the real essence uh, of this uh, topic needs to be discerned. And as Fujisawa-san said, in the midst of this diverse richness, there are diverse ways for the cities to exist. And in a way, perhaps you could live in Japan, but uh, gain uh, your education from India and then medical care from another country. Uh, as we try to uh, become more enriched, uh, currently we are bound by the physical boundary. We only had one uh, set, like uh, one lunch box. You didn't, you couldn't ch choose from other uh, lunch boxes. But now we are able to uh, get uh, a wider selection in the menu. So in this uh, multi-layered network, uh, perhaps we could change a, a lifestyle that better resonates with us. And that could also reflect on the possibility of the city. And in fact, uh, that is an uh, um, issue of uh, choice uh, in economic theory. Uh, so it, there's only one set menu of A, and you have to, uh, well, people will complain, ask for B and C. But if there were 10,000 uh, set menus, uh, it would be uh, difficult, and, and people would want to um, ask uh, that uh, the choice be given to them. So uh, there is diversity of B and C, D, but uh, rather than that, uh, uh, personalized uh, GDP or statistics uh, may be requested. And uh, similar uh, things might occur, uh, like uh, uh, sending uh, the information through internet. Now, to accumulate from the issues, uh, that's very important. Uh, but uh, in Japan, uh, we don't have much precedent. We don't have a uh, case law. Um, to, um, compared to US and uh, UK, um, we don't have a uh, case uh, law. Uh, so it's very difficult to accumulate. Uh, it's a statutory law in Japan. But that uh, is uh, just a comment I wanted to share with you. Now I have a question for you. Uh, with the uh, uh, COVID-19, uh, we are discussing uh, what, uh, how our behavior changed. And trust and uh, uh, connectivity have uh, been emphasized uh, as being important in all the sessions. And I agree with that. Uh, but uh, uh, what is occurring in reality is uh, completely different. Unfortunately, um, there were 2,000 people uh, committed suicides uh, in October. And it's about the same number as people who lost their lives with COVID-19. Just for one month, uh, we had uh, so many suicides. And uh, there is a lack of bond bonding, and uh, it's a matter of trust. Uh, there are some people who are discussing this in Japan. Uh, but uh, uh, globally, how does it compare? It uh, must be considered as well. In case of uh, uh, vaccines, uh, vaccine nationalism uh, is being discussed. Well, when vaccines uh, are uh, developed, uh, um, there are contracts uh, uh, concluded uh, amongst the and, uh, it seems that the developed nations are, uh, uh, are securing two times the population. But uh, in African nations, uh, they are only uh, secured 14 percent of their needs. The poverty ratio in the world uh, has uh, been declining, but uh, this year it has reverted uh, upward. Uh, AIDS uh, patients have been decreasing, but uh, it is now increasing. Uh, so the image of what uh, we are visualizing for after corona and the actual situation uh, are in a disconnect. So I would like to ask your views on this. Uh, as uh, you have rightly mentioned, uh, the reality is uh, quite different to our vision. In uh, May, uh, I have been engaged in activities to support single mothers because uh, they are most uh, challenged uh, economically. And we asked them, what is uh, their problem? 90% uh, have uh, economic uh, issues and uh, they have to go to the park uh, to get water. And uh, or food, uh, money is only uh, 100 yen per day. And they don't know who to uh, contact. Uh, they feel very isolated uh, and it was very serious. 
the NPOs uh, that uh, we are that can provide support uh, uh, are listed, uh, but they don't have uh, um, access to information, and uh, the supporting bodies are doing their utmost, but they cannot access everyone. Uh, so uh, the people who are challenged are not able to access this information. Uh, they are not receiving support. Uh, there is a disconnect. As long as there is a connectivity, there is bond, uh, we can provide support. Uh, but the absence of uh, this uh, connectivity is the problem. We don't have an immediate answer. But since everyone has um, a smartphone, a line uh, can be used. Um, so uh, by way of infrastructure, we can provide information to the single mothers where they can receive a financial aid as well as food support. Uh, the connectivity uh, is uh, the issue. It was uh, very difficult, uh, even though we went to, through a trial and error process. And it is, uh, uh, we are discussing this with the uh, Minister Kono uh, in charge of uh, administrative reform. Uh, single mothers, uh, poverty of children, uh, this is a challenge that, that must be overcome. Uh, we were compelled to provide service, uh, so it's uh, uh, based on average. Uh, but there is also stigma in receiving uh, aid, uh, so it's very difficult uh, to provide uh, such aid. But if there is a digital connectivity, uh, if we see uh, that uh, the uh, body uh, index is uh, um, declining, or their academic ability uh, is uh, declining, uh, we can identify that and preempt uh, support. It is not uh, uh, support uh, for uh, poverty, uh, but uh, this is it can be positioned as uh, children's support. Uh, so that w then we can uh, preempt um, providing support, and there could be even though uh, without uh, them requesting for support, uh, we can automatically provide such support. That is going to be very important in the new normal. It's not analog or digital. By having this option of digital, the individual support uh, of the past or leaving nobody behind was very difficult. Uh, we were only able to maximize uh, the um, happiness, uh, but uh, with the diversity, we can leave honestly leave no one behind and with the COVID-19 uh, the, um, the shortcomings of society has come to the fore uh, therefore uh, going forward uh, we can establish a new society ideal I think uh, we are at a tipping point uh, digital technology uh, can provide the support uh, to these people who are challenged it is a wonderful method, uh, so we have to capitalize on this. Uh, we have to think hard about how we can provide support in this regard. Mr. Sasson, do you have any comments on this? Uh, what we are discussing now is that uh, values will be more uh, diverse going forward. There's going to be diverse values, which is a good thing. Uh, but uh, with the COVID-19, uh, the diversity uh, have uh, come to the fore has been uh, manifest and uh, it was not connected. So because uh, there is a lack of uh, connectivity, we don't know what the pe people in poverty are uh, living in and uh, people in poverty do not know what kind of support uh, can be made available to them. Uh, because uh, uh, there is a diversity, uh, COVID-19 has taught us that there has to be connectivity uh, between uh, these uh, diversities. And by uh, capitalizing on data, the difference and uh, disparity uh, can be recognized further at the same time uh, data can be visualized but there will be with that uh, there will be interaction in terms of uh, goods as well as uh, emotions communication or dialogue that has been uh, discussed in Hamada san's uh, session is going to be more important in the digital agency, uh, we are going to put forth a request. Data infrastructure establishment is necessary. There will be a need for deregulation in this area. Irai san Kono san uh, must do a very good job in this regard. What is most important pillar is inclusiveness. Singapore is very interesting. In 2017, Smart Nation Singapore program was established and it is up and running already. 
we have to make sure they have to make sure that uh, no one is left behind in order to ensure this uh, digital ambassadors have been established uh, this is very similar to basic income in uh, so they will provide support to a certain level they will provide support and uh, we need uh, such a system in digital agency in initiatives, otherwise we will not be able to do a good job uh, uh, in the post-COVID-19 world. I hope that uh, you will also be proponents of this. I have one concern listening to your uh, discussions. Um, and the connectivity, trust, mm, they are both, both very important. But how much is this shared globally is the issue. Um, because uh, in Japan, uh, there is uh, human betweenism uh, is very important uh, uh, concept uh, in Japan. Uh, the relationship amongst people uh, have uh, been uh, emphasized. Uh, even the Chinese character uh, has uh, this uh, concept uh, embedded. Uh, so um, this is very important. And uh, and uh, very important concepts are based on this Chinese character of uh, in between. Um, and uh, it is uh, embedded in social capital. And that is the reason why we are discussing this uh, topic. Uh, but uh, this is not its entirety. Uh, we need to make this uh, global. Uh, but there could be a disconnect between the global standard and what we are discussing. I agree with what you're saying, but uh, there could be a disconnect. Uh, uh, what is your take on this? Uh, in uh, COVID-19, uh, I have been working with NHK and conducting a survey globally. It's not a complete uh, sample. It's uh, very limited. However, we have found uh, that uh, many people are afraid of not learning uh, because of COVID-19. But in uh, in the Europe, uh, there is more solidarity. And uh, in US, there is reflection that uh, there are uh, more intense uh, divisions. And we have found out uh, that uh, there is a need uh, to connect, uh, to bond. But uh, we are connected because of COVID-19, uh, so we should uh, have a future ideal uh, with the same eyes, same vision. SDGs uh, is uh, in the background, and green economy ha is also being called for in terms of uh, fundamental principles. Um, it's very difficult to find uh, common ground. Uh, Ogata Sadako said that the uh, human Basics is very important, but uh, uh, life uh, will be at the core. Uh, but uh, the uh, life save, saved of a refugee could uh, kill people, but uh, life is still uh, very important. Uh, but we have to make sure uh, that uh, the flame uh, will not be distinguished. Otherwise, uh, uh, they will not be able to recover. Uh, this has come to the fore uh, with COVID-19. And also to pursue a new affluence to empower uh, this uh, effort uh, in terms of uh, um, connectivity will be required in the same continuum as the SDGs. And uh, this is something that I feel very strongly in um, the discussions taking place globally and uh, in the run up to the expo. I hope that uh, we can redefine this uh, so that uh, we can provide new values. At the World Economic Forum, stakeholder capitalism uh, was discussed and mentioned uh, which is about not just the shareholders, but all uh, stakeholders uh, to be involved in the uh, capitalism. It's, so it's therefore not Japan, but uh, the world is sharing this kind of uh, perception. Do you have any comments uh, to make on this? Well, looking at the current situation in the United States, I am very seriously concerned about the divide. But the divide was created by whom? For example, uh, if you're living in a community, the person next door might be uh, supporting uh, the Democratic Party, whereas you are supporting the uh, Republicans. And this divide uh, is created uh, by someone. And there are someone who are leveraging, making use of this, taking advantage of the divide. 
the same uh, applies for war. Uh, war uh, is taken advantage of by, by someone. Even if uh, the political uh, situation is different, uh, and yet uh, will we as human beings attack that person? Uh, I think uh, the emotions that we have are more important. Uh, and uh, there is a typical text uh, that was very impressive for me uh, in the United States. There was a Jefferson Adamson uh, friendship, and I didn't know of this before. Uh, Father B Bush and Clinton, they have fought a very serious and contentious uh, uh, presidential election. But when there was a serious uh, 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 natural disaster. Uh, they supported one another. And uh, when Father Bush died, um, Cl President Clinton uh, sent uh, an article to uh, the the uh, newspaper, Washington Post. And so even if uh, they were fighting uh, and competing against one another, uh, they would also be bonded deeply uh, to one another. So uh, I'm trying to think back on how I am and uh, uh, think back on ourselves is something that we can do. Takenaka-san, your question, uh, you're saying that, uh, well, we're discussing about these things in Japan, but uh, uh, it's kind of uh, disconnected from the rest of the world. Well, in my view, uh, I'm more gravely concerned about Japan because uh, uh, in other parts of the world, uh, they have religion. Uh, and uh, at Davos, uh, I sometimes attend uh, the uh, Young Global Leaders uh, meeting, although I'm now no longer young. But uh, when I speak with people from ASEAN or, or South America, they tend to have, uh, you know, a, a loose uh, community connection. Uh, there might be uh, some inequalities uh, uh, and uh, poverty issues and so forth, but they are more loosely connected. Uh, in Japan, we don't have that common thread, uh, and that's why we talk about things like trust uh, and so forth. And the, the greatest fear for me is that when we are, again, able to uh, visit other parts of the world, we might come to realize that Japan was the only country that didn't change with COVID. Thank you. That's a very interesting and also very important point. Trust. When we talk about trust, uh, what is it about? Is it among the family members or within companies? And at the end of the day, it could be trust for the government. And that is a big question mark that we have in Japan uh, with the emergency declaration that was not enforced. Uh, the Japanese people uh, did not trust the government. We found that out uh, from questionnaire surveys. But uh, under such emergency situations, certain uh, authority needs to be given to the, to the government. Uh, that was not the trend that we saw in Japan. And so trust is also uh, an area where we see diversity. I would really want to deepen our discussion and would like to continue and engage in this discussion even further, but uh, we're running out of time. So I will give each of you a minute and a half to two minutes to share with us how human behavior will change with COVID-19. What your thoughts are, starting with Hamada-san, please. I briefly mentioned this before, but our I think we need to be more open to our conscious um, when people are facing difficulties and challenges, so we need to support them. That's, I think, what everyone is thinking. But if you think that you are uh, being uh, in a disadvantageous position, you might start to attack others who are um, in an advantageous position. So. That's why I think that the dialogue is very important, uh, not give up on uh, having a dialogue with others, uh, communicating with others to be able to have a better understanding, to avoid misunderstanding. And as we heard in the earlier sessions, COVID-19 has come to us. and. While we felt that we will be able to live almost forever, n now with COVID-19, we're beginning to think that uh, that's an illusion, that we are 
lives are, are limited. And then uh, we came to realize that uh, we're not living on in isolation. We're living because of others. What was important to me? What it what is valuable to me? We were able to stop and think. Uh, as individuals and as companies to be able to think about what is important. And after COVID-19 subsides, if we could turn it into action, uh, if there could be a divide, a uh, discrepancy between those who were able to put it into action and those who were not. As a result of thinking and uh, and worrying and uh, and uh, so forth, I think we need to, uh, at the same time, take action. Cre not creating something that everyone can appreciate. Uh, instead, each one, each individual has to uh, be able to identify uh, what can be presented to others instead of waiting on, on the waiting end. Miata, Professor Miata? Well, with COVID-19, I feel that the whole world is uh, asking the question of of uh, the substance of us uh, being the Black Lives Matter uh, is uh, a movement in the United States. Uh, the Americans were unable to learn lesson um, after the war uh, when um, discrimination had become a problem and. Uh, uh, basic income uh, is a big question in Germany, and environment is the big question in France, for example. Uh, not just economic rationality, but uh, the the word uh, "great reset" uh, is a um, is an issue that was taken up by uh, Davos meeting. But uh, this is "great reset" is about uh thinking back on oneself uh, and uh, takenaka san you were uh, talking about digitalization uh, we are uh, in a time where digitalization has come uh, front and center uh, for the japanese government and as for myself as an individual uh, the question of whether i will change will i change is a question but should i change is also another question and uh, i want to do whatever i can uh, in order to change uh, uh, as myself and also as a country and also uh, the, the japanese businesses i think will also be uh, thinking about that and through co-creation with uh, other people new values new uh, definition of um, affluence I think will emerge and I think uh, will define our future. Thank you very much for that. Uh, this is something that uh, I was told by Professor Miyata. COVID-19, we still don't know what it is. And every day, uh, we're discovering new things and new aspects about COVID-19. And I completely agree with that. We hope va vaccines will come out. but. Uh, uh, there are different news uh, about it, and now uh, there's news that uh, uh, vaccines might come in the United States, and we don't know about immunity uh, and, and antibody being created and so forth. Uh, but um, COVID-19 uh, requires a lot of patience on our side. And uh, someone said, uh, stop and think. But I often talk about uh, going up on the balcony and see where you are. Because if you stand in the balcony, you'll be able to uh, see yourselves in an objective manner. An expert in leadership has been talking about this. And we are definitely in such a situation. And it, as it was discussed in the previous session, questionnaires have been conducted to think back where You'll be working. What is the definition of happiness? You know, this is uh, an opportunity for us in that sense. But in the meantime, what is occurring is that things like remote learning, remote education, uh, pandemic might uh, uh, linger on. So we n need to offer uh, remote uh, learning. But uh, uh, remote learning in uh, primary school and secondary school is not uh, acknowledged as a credit. Uh, and therefore, uh, and also telemedicine uh, is also under regulation. Uh, first time uh, diagnosis uh, was uh, is now accepted. Uh, 
uh, but uh, telemedicine is only admitted, permitted uh, during COVID-19. So there are things that are changing, but in the meantime, there are things that uh, I expect and hope to change, but uh, definitely are not changing. And so there is a coexistence of both both of them. And now we are facing the uh, third wave, should I say. There is a rise in, in new cases of COVID-19, and we need to uh, sophisticate ourselves and need to ask us the right questions. Once again, thank you very much for moderating very challenging sessions and for your very creative input today. So next, uh, we will be inviting uh, Mr. Marks Gabriel. Uh, the session will be moderated by a Nanjo-san. I look forward to your active participation in the next session as well. Once again, thank you very much.